What's up everyone? So I wanted to tell you guys the story of the last time I actually held a piece of Jehovah's Witness literature. The story came rushing back to me as I spoke to a client who was also given this specific piece of literature and her response was a feeling of, I need to get back into the organization. So complete fear. So this instance for me was the summer of 2016. I went back home to visit my family. I was living in Los Angeles at the time with my husband. Went back to visit my family. As if you guys have been following my channel, my mom is the only one in the organization. My other family members don't really speak to me. I have uh, an uncle, my aunt's husband, who is an elder in the Arabic speaking congregation. And he actually walked me down the aisle during my first wedding when I was 24 and he has been or he was a father figure to me because my father was not around at all uh, growing up or as a Jehovah's Witness so this uncle of mine was 100% like a father figure to me so when I got disfellowshipped December 2011 he hasn't spoken to me since when I was visiting my family in 2016 I saw him in passing, but he chose not to have eye contact with me. And just like my mom ignores me, like I was a ghost in the room. Big surprise, I'm, I was disfellowship, I'm still disfellowship. Anyways, he proceeds to give this track, Return to Jehovah, which I'm going to insert in this video. If you haven't seen it before, this was a track that was given to the Jehovah's Witnesses during the district convention, the summer district convention of 2015. So this client of mine that got this track has, had just gotten so afraid, it's filled with so much fear when she got the track that she actually started going back to the meetings. I, on the other hand, this track was given to my sister who is not a witness. And then my sister gave it to me and the moment I held it in my hand, actually my dad was in the room, I just started getting filled with so much anger. And, I'm, and I, at, time, at that time, I really wasn't great at expressing my anger. I had a full on anxiety attack. I was shaking, I was crying, I was screaming, I was enraged. And I looked at this track and I said, how dare my uncle not even look at me. He's pretty much been a dad to me and he's giving me this track. Are you fucking kidding me? My dad takes it from my hand and then rips it. And he says, don't worry about it. Let's not think about it. Um, that was such an experience for me to just allow myself looking back now and just see how much the Jehovah's Witnesses are brainwashed to literally completely ignore somebody who you would consider your daughter. My mom has also completely ignored me. Actually, another thing I wanted to say in this video is when I first made my video about coming out as a, an ex Jehovah's Witness or my story of being a Jehovah's Witness is like an hour long. I made it back in 2018. My mom has sent me a text message saying that she no longer considers me her daughter. So she was disowning me. And that, that was kind of like the last straw of the relationship that me and my mom had. I'm actually kind of, think of thinking about making a video dedicated to her because I don't think the like a letter would be sufficient. But my mom, who I know, I only had a relationship with her because of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Everything was about her. So the fact that she was completely ignoring me along with my uncle who was completely ignoring me and it, it just again the religion teaches you to completely ignore the people that you are close with this is such a fear tactic so then if you don't talk to them they're gonna feel terrible and want to come back to jehovah's organization and a lot of people are going back faking it and then kind of fading away or they still are back and now all of their family is out and they're really really struggling so one of the points i really wanted to mention is how important it is for us not to have a hope that we're going to have communication with our family members anymore but allowing ourselves to grieve them so grieving as if your family member has passed has died. I know that sounds very tragic, but bear with me. 
in order for you to be in a better place and not have these assumptions or desires or need to have them back in your life, you really have to grieve them. And when you do grieve them, when you do grieve the, the loss of them as if they have died, I have had funerals of my mom. I've seen her in a casket. I've seen her being buried. I've had dreams of that. I've had thoughts of that. She's in my perspective, she has already died. So I have already grieved her. Now, if she decides to come back into my life, I am welcoming her with open arms. There was a time for many years, I was definitely, definitely de devastated that we weren't speaking. But now I've come to the terms that she is brainwashed in the, the fact if she ever comes back to speaking to me is in my opinion, less than 1% and I'm totally okay with that. So grieve the ones you've lost and don't hold on to these false assumptions that they're gonna come back and speak to you. And I, and, and I know that some parents are speaking to their disfellowship children with kind of a wall, a little bit of a barrier. And I know that this pandemic has also brought up some really interesting conversations with people. So just, if you do grieve them, it's going to, if you do grieve the, pe the person that you love that's still in the Jehovah's Witness organization, when and if, and if they do not come back into your life, which like I said, for me, it's like less than 1%, it opens up this whole new space because now I feel really bad for my mom. I have more compassion for her. Her story is very interesting as well. So I have compassion for her. I've let her go and she's a separate entity from me. Now I can also concentrate on mothering myself. I know this video has gone all over the place from me getting this track, but I also wanted to talk about the story that I have with my mom. So it's brought me back to being able to mother myself. And throughout my whole life, I never felt like I actually fit into my Middle Eastern family, nor did I really feel connected to the congregation. I felt more connected to the congregation than I did the Middle Eastern family as my last video was talking about feeling safe in the congregation. But now that I'm just me and now I'm married to my second husband, there's this safety and this calmness and this love and this grace. It's just all encompassing and it's all in my life. And now that I'm pursuing my, what I feel like is my purpose, of helping other ex Jehovah's Witnesses and other people find their most authentic self, there's just this calmness in my heart. And it's very interesting. I was actually thinking about on my run this morning, how I was just handed this crazy life of being born in Iraq, growing up in America, being a Jehovah's Witness, and then getting disfellowshipped and starting this whole other life again that I feel like the universe has gifted me this life because I am an, a very outspoken person. I'm not afraid to be who I am or what people think about me. I've been given this life and this voice to help people find their voice, their truth, and their most authentic self. So I'm gonna stop talking right now. I hope you guys enjoy this video and we will talk soon. Much love to you guys. Bye.